In 15 minutes, we catch up with the contestants in the last heat of the second round in our school's quiz first class. But now, the news with Moira Stewart. A gunman tries to kill the Turkish Prime Minister. Turgut Özal survives with just a scratch. Ten people are injured. The hostages' families say they're optimistic, but they don't expect miracles from the MP's visit to Iran. And the goal that put the Irish Republic out of the European Championships. The Turkish Prime Minister, Turgut Özal, has survived an assassination attempt. A gunman fired shots at him while he was speaking at a political rally in the capital, Ankara, but a bullet merely grazed his hand. A man was overpowered by security guards and is being questioned. Mr Özal was addressing about 5,000 people on the first day of his party congress when a gunman behind a line of photographers fired two shots directly at him. As Mr. Ozal dived for cover behind the rostrum, there were more shots, this time from his own security men. The gunman, identified here by Turkish television, was injured in the hail of bullets. Security guards surrounded the Prime Minister as hundreds of people scattered around the stadium. The gunman was swiftly arrested. He's a suspected right-wing terrorist. He was given medical attention at the scene, then taken to hospital where he was questioned by the police. About 20 other people were also injured in the shooting and in the ensuing panic. Mr. Ozal continued his speech to the cheering of his supporters. He said our lives belong to Allah he can only take them away. Terry Waite's family say they're very pleased about the MP's mission to Iran, but have no illusions that it'll work miracles. Despite Foreign Office reservations, it's the Archbishop of Canterbury who's behind this latest initiative to free Mr Waite and two other British hostages held in Lebanon. The three MPs and a peer will be leaving tomorrow for Tehran. Jackie Rowley reports. The Archbishop's envoy, John Little, has been in Iran for several days, planning the visit with senior members of the Ayatollah's government. Up to now, Dr. Runsey has maintained a low-key approach to efforts to free the hostages. This new high profile has delighted Terry Waite's family. After 16 months in the case of Terry, we have been through so many rumours and speculations and false initiatives that we are a, um, a bit rumour exhausted. Um, but there's no doubt about it, this is a very special initiative because it comes with the blessing of the Archbishop of Canterbury and of course we say Godspeed to, uh, uh, to the mission. We hope it comes back with some success. The objective is to improve relations following recent speculation that Iran is opening up to proposals about the hostages. Securing their release is the long-term aim and the MPs stress they have no powers to negotiate. And we certainly cannot give the impression that a fact-finding mission of this kind by members of parliament uh, can achieve more than might be the case uh, if it were, for example, foreign office ministers uh, fully briefed uh, on those issues. It is vital, I think, that they are fully aware of the fact that they do not control the situation into which they are going. They will inevitably, inevitably be exploited, uh, and that exploitation will be part of the power struggle that's going on within Iran at the present time. The Foreign Secretary, Sir Geoffrey Howe, made no comment as he left Heathrow for the Toronto Economic Summit. But the government is coming under pressure to appear more active in seeking a solution to the hostage problem, and this church mission is bound to be seen as criticism of official tactics. A memorial service has been taking place in Lisbon, County Antrim, for the six soldiers killed in the town by an IRA bomb on Wednesday. The service was organised by the local people who called it a simple act of remembrance. We share their grief. The people of Lisbon gathered in their hundreds today around the town's war memorial to pay their respects to the six soldiers who died in the IRA bombing last Wednesday. Local church leaders and councillors led the act of remembrance. 
More and more flowers and tributes have been put around the memorial since the bombing happened. The mayor of the town laid a special wreath in memory of the soldiers. It was only a brief ceremony, but a moving one for the people of Lisbon. Many of them are still shocked by the brutal murders. There was no sign of anger today, just sadness. In another part of the town, there were more floral tributes. At least 400 bouquets have been put on the pavement near where the bomb went off. More are arriving all the time. Prince Edward has arrived in Northern Ireland to meet young adventurers taking part in the Duke of Edinburgh award scheme. It's the Prince's second visit to the province and the fourth royal trip to Ulster this year. There was extra security following the Lisbon bomb on Wednesday. The Prince expressed his sympathy for people associated with the six soldiers who were killed. He met a special support group led by Lisbon's mayor, Alderman William Bleakes. The main reason for Prince Edward's visit, however, was to meet participants of the Duke of Edinburgh award scheme, with which he is closely involved. Four members of a family died when fire destroyed their home near Falmouth in Cornwall. They were four-year-old Matthew Peterson, his brother Daniel, aged seven, their 19-year-old sister Adele, and her baby daughter. It's believed the fire started in a settee in the lounge while the family were asleep upstairs. It spread rapidly through the house and foam mattresses were still smouldering as firemen started the clearing up operation. The father, Daniel Peterson, managed to escape with his wife and 22-year-old son. Although firemen were on the scene within minutes, flames had already spread through every room. In the European Football Championship in West Germany, the Republic of Ireland have failed to reach next week's semi-finals. In their Group 2 match in Gelsenkirchen, they were beaten 1-0 by Holland, who now go through to the next round. 43 English fans arrested by police overnight in trouble in the centre of Frankfurt were forced to miss this afternoon's match. Police say they checked the fans' names against computer records, which identified them as known hooligans. Uh, there was trouble too in Munich, which where more than 50 fans, most of them German, were arrested. Rob Bonnet in Frankfurt reports. Report just coming. The nightly routine of violence continued near Frankfurt's main railway station. The pattern is predictable. The fans get drunk, then turn to vandalism and violence. Of equal certainty is that the large police presence picks off the offenders. 43 Englishmen aged between 18 and 28 were arrested. They all spent the night in police cells and missed this afternoon's match. Some England fans have already returned home. Those who stayed were subjected to the standard intense security measures at Frankfurt's Waldstadion. Later tonight, 1,200 police will be on duty as the fans converge on the city centre. And that's it for now. The main news on BBC One tonight is at 9.35. Hello there. It looks like a fine day for most of us tomorrow, and actually if you're on the East Coast, some of you may well find that it's a, a good deal warmer as well. We still have high pressure on the scene. That's going to be with us for some considerable time. And as you see, well-broken cloud. It's not settled everywhere. Down on the continent there, some of the resorts suffering once again from thunderstorms. But a fine evening, some late sunshine just about everywhere, although there are one or two patches of cloud floating around. And indeed, there'll continue to be a little bit of cloud overnight. But where it breaks, I think you'll find just for a time around dawn, the odd fog patch as those temperatures drop back to about 10 degrees Celsius or so. Tomorrow, a dry day just about everywhere, with the exception of the far northwest of Scotland, where, like tonight, there just might be one or two spots of light rain and drizzle. But most places having a reasonable amount of sunshine, but there will be some cloud floating around. It'll take away the sunshine from time to time. I think the cloudiest area is probably likely to be Northern Ireland, southwest Scotland, through the Lake District, and into Wales. But even there, a few breaks will give you some glimpses of the sun, and there may be still some patchy clouds in the extreme southeast, but temperatures in many places on the warm side, in fact higher than of late, along that east coast. And now on BBC One, here's Ralph Deller with the latest sports news. Hello, and today's sporting headlines. In football, England lose to the Soviet Union. In cricket, England are losing to the West Indies. If you're looking for winners, well, the Irish won a lot of friends, but it's the Dutch who go through to the semi-finals of the European Football Championships. Martina Navratilova won the Pilkington Tennis Tournament in Eastbourne. 
Well, let's start with that football. And in Gelsenkirchen, the Irish only needed a draw to go through to the semi-finals. And for 80 minutes, it looked as if they might do it. Hard luck to the Irish. Well, England, of course, were already out of the championships. They were only playing for pride today, but they didn't salvage much of that against the Soviet Union. In Frankfurt, they lost 3-1. Elenikov scored first for the Soviet Union after three minutes. Tony Adams equalised after 15 minutes for England. But Mikhail Chenko scored before half-time and Pisalko wrapped it all up in the second half. So these are how the tables look at the completion of the group matches with the USSR and the Netherlands going through from group two and the, in the semi-finals West Germany play the Netherlands in Hamburg on Tuesday and then in Wednesday in Stuttgart it's the USSR against Italy. Well now cricket and it was only a couple of days ago that England were doing rather well in the test match at Lords against the West Indies. Well it all went wrong for England yesterday and it got even worse today as first Greenwich and then Richards tore the England attack apart. That's the latest score. West Indies in their second innings 277 for five. That's a lead of 321. Greenwich 103, Richards 72. Now let's catch up on the county scores. Worcestershire and Derbyshire first of all. Worcestershire the first to bat there, 202 for 5 in 85 overs. Nottinghamshire and Hampshire, knots 197 all out in 72.1. Lancashire 236 for 4 in 79 overs against Gloucestershire. And uh, Sussex and Leicestershire, Sussex 159 all out, the, that was in 54.3 overs. And Leicestershire replied with 20 for the loss of one wicket in 13 overs. North Hans, 251 for 6 in 81 overs against Middlesex. Kent were 193 for 5 in 73 overs in their match against Warwickshire. And Yorkshire, 133 all out in 54.1 overs. And Essex replying 37 for 2 in 13. Well, some tennis news now. And Martina Navratilova gained her revenge, plus a cheque for £28,500 with her victory over the Russian girl Natalia Svereva in the Pilkington Women's Championship in Eastbourne. Miss Navratilova won 6-2, 6-2 in a 58-minute final to take the title for the seventh time and to avenge her defeat by the Russian in the French Open Championships recently. Now, a lot of sport coming up this evening on BBC television, starting with some show jumping, the King George V Gold Cup. That's on BBC One tonight at 10 to 10. And then on BBC Two at 10.45, the golf, the third round from Massachusetts, the US Open Championship. That's from the Brookline course, with plenty of Brits up there in the, the lead, of course. Cricket, we've got the second test from Lords, England against the West Indies. Highlights of today's third day's play. That's on BBC Two at half past 12. And that's followed by the tennis from Eastbourne, the final of the Pilkington Glass Ladies Championship. That's at one o'clock. It'll be on BBC Two. two. And uh, Grandstand tomorrow on uh, 1.30, BBC Two. And there's Sport Now on BBC Two. Entertainment for Saturday evening on BBC One begins at 5.45 with Skin Game, a comedy western starring James Garner as a con man for whom close shaves are a speciality. And what, may I ask, is the meaning of this? Les Dennis is in a spin in his laughter show at 7.25. In the phantom of the opera, 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 opera. <laughs> At 8 o'clock, Lieutenant Colombo sets out to solve a murder case in his own inimitable style. What do you think? I think she's remarkable. I'm talking about the mother. At a 9.50, there's the Royal International Horse Show, live from the NEC, featuring the King George V Gold Cup. At 11 o'clock, Rod Steiger is the illustrated man with evil on his mind. Why would you want to kill anybody? Wonder why? All right. I'll show you why. Oh my God. And with American basketball at 12.40, that's entertainment for Saturday night on BBC One.